All right, time for something that is a little different. This time, I'm going to cover more than just Kofar, but mostly Kofar. Saying one of the things with Kofar is that while we do have quite a lot of scenes of Kofar, we don't really learn a whole lot about it as a location. And if you look at the wiki article here, it's mostly behind the scenes stuff. Which, you know, certain parts of it were filmed outdoors on the island of Madeira. Sure, cool, why not? Um, but the actual forest stuff, not so much. Because, again, it's a sci fi forest. It doesn't exactly fit anything in real life, so you can't just go to a. Anyways. So, their idea originally was. Uh, Kashik, but then they decided that it would be better to use a different but kind of somewhat similar planet uh, instead of Kashik. Which I honestly think was a good idea because Kashik is something that you would expect to have a large number of Wookiees, not just one. And for this, it worked better uh, having doing the whole like, oh, we're here to find someone and hunt him down and what have you, because, well, it's not a racist homeworld. It's just a handful of people living here. Now, notably, let's see, which, which one is it? This is a place that does have a significant number of permanent settlements. This is a you know, landing zone. There is a village here that is that they visited. It's not much of a village, but it's something. So, you know. Now, one thing I like about uh, Kofar is the fact that the they didn't just go like, oh, this is a planet with a bunch of trees. Therefore, we will see a bunch of trees while we're here. And we actually went and made a location that had varied terrain. That was actually pretty cool. Because you have this here where, you know, it's a grassy field. I mean, you see a whole bunch of vegetation everywhere, but it's very small. You have this here. Again, on the right side of the picture, grassy field. But on the left side of the picture, we see a whole bunch of trees, things that are larger than grass. Not, you know, fantasy forest kind of enormous trees, but we're getting there because, yeah, it has those trees. And that's actually the part where Kilnaka lives, is that he's hiding inside the dense forest. Dum, dum, dum. Yeah. These are also a um, species of bug that lives here. These are called umber moths. Whether or not they're actually moths in the real world sense, I'm not sure. It is, however, a flying creature that has many bug-like uh, qualities. This is really not a very good picture of one of them. Like, seriously, that's like the face and part of the body while it's lunging towards the camera. Lame. But yeah, Umber Moss, relatively large. This listed is 8.9 meters long, and that sounds too big to me. Uh, seeing the way fighting people, yes, it's somewhat larger than a person, but not that large. Like, seriously, this would be like three times... Wait, no. Human heights are closer to two meters. So this would be like over four times. That, that sounds too big. This would make more sense if it was 8.9 feet. Uh, anyway, though. so the bugs are large. Uh, anyone who has real weapons, though, the bugs are not much of a threat. Shoot it with a blaster. 
cut it in half with a lightsaber. That happened more than once, actually. But, you know, when there's a group of them, uh, that's been a problem more than once. So, um... What to do with this stuff, though? So, this location was conceived as a place that is remote, isolated, and still has a whole bunch of trees and vegetation to look at. Because, you know, Kilnaka went to some place where he would feel at home, more or less. And that does seem to have been the case. I read mean, he had live here all that look. Okay, so here's your question. Not really sure of how long he lived here. Because, like, after the whole thing of, um, because, like, before in the past time period stuff, he had, he, they never said anything about what he was planning on doing at all. They, in a few flashbacks, they mentioned that he went to Kofar. I don't remember when. It's also possible they may have simply never said how long he lived on Kofar. Oh well. Oh well. To be honest, though, that's one of those things it's best to figure out when you're doing a TTRPG thing, because players are going to be curious. Whether it's a major plot point or not, someone will have reason to consider it. And of course, you know, if your story is not written to pay attention to it, it might actually cause uh, issues with the plot. If you have a plot that makes varied assumptions as to how long a character has been living in a certain location and they don't match. Anyway, though, so, again, this isn't one of those things that's a particularly complicated concept. And the varied terrain is actually uh, one of the things that, that makes it cool. Like, also, you have this thing here that is the um, thing Kilnaka lives in. It's apparently the remains of some sort of a crashed ship that he's using as um, material. Which, you know, that is a thing Wookiees have been known to do. So, you know, re pretty regular and normal. And also, it's like the really dense parts of this forest genuinely are quite dark, even in the daytime. And, of course, dark is a tube at night. Because the uh, trees, the, well, you're not getting any. Uh, light from the sky at night uh, under that kind of a canopy. Now, as for Kelnaka's place, it's, it's obviously a very um, lived-in thing. He has Kelnaka reasons for doing all sorts of stuff, and it kind of looks rather jumbled and very homey. Although you have this stuff, which, yeah, for some reason, Kelnaka seems to have developed some sort of fascination or obsession with the weird symbols that the cult on Brindok was using. This does not get explained, but this is the sort of thing that might be fun to examine if you were to write this into a TTRPG. As players would have reason to care about it, especially if they know that he's dealing with something that is seemingly arcane. Why is the Wookiee Jedi studying these patterns? Does he have a reason for it, or is this just him doodling because he feels like it? Having players look at such questions might cause them to make a serious effort to find out, or maybe not.
but it's something to at least think about ahead of time. Because this is something that I've seen people ask about in commentary at the show. Why was Kalaka doing this? And we don't have answers. We would love to have answers, though. Well, some of us anyways. And that's the thing to consider for writing a TTRPG with this in it, is that there's a good chance that whoever your players are will be interested in getting answers. And, you know, you might end up having your uh, party do something fun like uh, scrutinizing his cabin and, like, r rummaging around trying to find any sort of tiny trace of information about what Kelnaka was doing and why. Because, let's face it, this is kind of strange. And when you look over here, you also see something that looks kind of similar. And, you know, okay, it's an environmental storytelling thing. Like, what you show the players about the environment that their characters are in tells them things about the story, not just the environment, because the environment you choose to place the story in should be chosen as because it reflects the story. And, well, uh, it's going to reflect the story whether you want it to or not if you, you know, choose poorly. So choose carefully. You don't necessarily need to make it you know, detailed and super in-depth. Just, you know, get a basic bare-bones idea put together that is, you know, fully put together. And then you can just, like, fill in details later on. As long as you have the big picture um, straightened out to, to work right, filling in the details later is easy. And again, I mentioned that it has very interestingly varied terrain. And that's actually something that's a, that's a very good thing because, like, it gives you options for what you're doing in part of telling the story. It's like, you know, like, you could have the uh, people fighting in the forest or maybe fighting out of the forest. Or running back to their ship, which isn't in the forest, and leaving the forest. Because that is kind of a thing that happened in the episode, as it is, is that, you know, someone causes the bugs to go. A little angry and then they have to run away to be honest though individually the bugs aren't all that big of a deal but you know when there's a swarm of a dozen that's a problem and like i said before not really a huge amount of stuff to say here so i guess i'm gonna call it here because again kofar is an interesting place it's something that was specifically designed to be cool looking. They didn't bother explaining much of anything related to it, but hey, you know, looking cool is a good thing. And, well, okay, the whole Kilnaka thing, uh, the way that ended, bad, but Kilnaka's character was an interesting idea. So, again, I. May add something to the episode, having people going to find Kelnaka. And I think that's enough for now. See you guys later.